हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू फिजिक्स ग्रैंड दिस इज द सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन मॉपरचुविज प्रिंसिपल एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्यूशन बिहाइंड वॉट हैपन्स वेन वी यूज द मॉपरचुविज प्रिंसिपल एंड हाउ इट कैलकुलेट्स और प्रेडिक्ट विच इज द करेक्ट पाथ एमोंग ऑल द मैथमेटिकली पॉसिबल पाथ्स सो before we proceed let me just summarize what we got in our previous video and there we discussed what is the setup under which mopperchuvis principle can be used and we saw that it it is the case when we just know our end point coordinates but not time okay which means if you consider the case of two dimension you know x1 y1 and x2 y2 which is the initial and final coordinates but remember we don't know how much time it takes for the particle to go from x1 y1 to x2 y2 we do not have that information secondly we know what is the total energy of the system and i am going to call that energy by the letter e which is a constant because we also know that the there is no change in the energy with respect to time which means energy is conserved okay so when we are dealing with such a situation we have seen that hamilton's principle cannot be used here because to use the hamilton's principle we need to know t1 and t2 as well which we don't we which we don't know which what is uh, the end point coordinates okay and in in the last uh, uh video we ended by saying that but even then even though we cannot use hamilton's principle we can use another form of variational principle called the mopperchuvis principle in such a scenario and i also told you that there is a catch to this and i'm just going to reveal what the catch is now and we will understand it as we proceed and the catch is as follows from the mopperchuvis principle we cannot get what is the dynamical nature of the path which means we cannot get what is x as a function of t and y as a function of t but instead what mopperchuvis principle gives us is the geometrical curve which the uh, object is going to follow or in other words y of x okay so for example if you have this is y this is x okay if this is the initial point this is the final point there may be many different possible paths which all satisfy the total energies e and uh, law of conservation of energy but only one of these will be the correct path and that is what the mopperchuvis principle says and in this graph there is no information as to how much time each of this path have taken to go from point 1 to point 2 so that is the meaning by saying that we can only know y of x and not x of t and y of t okay all right so um but we can still find what uh, x of t and y of t is by after we find y of x okay that is once we get y of x we can still find our x of t and y of t using conservation of energy okay all right so now let us discuss or try to understand what is the intuition behind uh, what the mopperchuvis principle does and how it uh, gets us or gives the correct path y of x okay so we are going to talk about intuition intuition about what about what the mopperchuvis principle says okay so this is what we are going to do now so for this let us go back to the simplest case which is an example in one dimension okay so consider consider motion in one dimension where 1 2 and 3 are known 
what are these 1 2 and 3 this is basically our this condition 1 2 and 3 but here since we are dealing with one dimension we only know x1 and x2 there is no y coordinate okay so we are considering motion in one dimension where these three things are known to us okay also consider a closed system also consider a closed system by closed system what we mean is that in terms of uh, newton's laws we mean there is no external force okay because if there was an external force energy cannot be conserved okay then working in cartesian coordinates form we will have our total energy e given by half mv square plus the potential function u of x okay where v is nothing but the time derivative with respect to x of x with respect to time okay all right now if you consider this equation if you consider this equation this is the only thing that we know okay so when we use a variational principle this is an alternative way to newton's laws so when we start out with the variation principle we assume that we do not know Newton's laws and we do not have the concept of force and so on but here we are going to see it side by side so that we get a feel about what this Maupertuis principle is doing so right now we don't have any equations which looks like f is equal to ma okay all we know is this equation so if we know u of x then we we know this equation uh, exactly okay but mathematically mathematically equation so let me call this equation 1 equation 1 doesn't say anything doesn't say anything about the direction of the velocity about the direction of v now note that in one dimension there are only two possible direction that is positive and negative which is velocity being like this i am going to call it as positive velocity being like this is going to be negative okay now mathematically this equation says nothing about what is the direction of our uh, velocity as the particle traverses the different paths okay so all that this equation says is that as long as energy is conserved the particle can be moving in positive or negative direction okay so as long as energy is conserved okay the particle can be moving in positive or negative direction it doesn't say which direction okay as long as energy is conserved the particle can be moving in positive or negative direction we do not know okay so let us consider an example for this so that it becomes more clear so consider the following u versus x diagram so u of x comma x and let this level denote the total energy so let me draw it as a dotted line okay and let this point be our x1 and this point be x2 which is what we already know okay and we also assume that we know the form of u of x so let u of x be of this form something like this like this like this and like this and like this okay so this is our u of x let's say so i'm going to call this point as a and this point as b okay and this point correspond to x2 so if this is u of x 
then we have the equation e equals half mv square plus u of x this means our magnitude of velocity will be given by square root of 2 by m times e minus u of x so if u of x is less this quantity will be more which means velocity magnitude will be higher whereas if u of x is higher the velocity magnitude will be lower so this is this level is higher than this level so this means that if i draw the magnitude of velocity versus x curve for the same potential what we will have is the following so let us say that corresponding to this region so let's call this x2 this is b this is a then from x1 to a we will have a constant velocity let us say this is the velocity let's call it v1 okay and from a to b there will be a sudden jump in the velocity because there is a sudden jump in the potential and the velocity will be higher here because the potential is lower so this will jump to a higher value like this whereas in from b to from b to x2 what we have is that the velocity will be lower the least among the previous two values because the potential is the highest so here the velocity should come down to a value lower than v1 so let us call this as v2 and this as v3 let's say okay now so far there is no information about the direction of the velocity this is just the magnitude so all that this equation requires is that at every point in x the magnitude of velocity be, be, one, be given by this particular curve okay if our u of x is given by this particular curve okay now let me draw the different paths which are mathematically possible so let's call this as the time axis and this as our x axis and this is x1 and this is a this is b and this is x2 say so let me draw these uh, dotted lines representing these positions now the magnitude of uh, or uh, the di the information about the velocity in this particular graph is given by the inverse of the slope of the curve in this graph okay so slope of uh, tx graph is equal to 1 by v okay now this if the slope is positive velocity is positive if the slope is negative velocity is negative okay so let me draw a path which is which may be one of the possibilities with which the particle can travel and by newton's law we already know that if there is no external interaction or if the system is closed the particle has to follow a path which should look like this okay so initially it starts with a velocity so that means it should be a constant slope so this will be a line like this okay and from here so that is velocity v1 uh, now remember this is the inverse of velocity the slope is inverse of the velocity so for higher velocity the slope will be lower and for lower velocity the slope will be higher so the slope for the next a to b in this graph will be lower so it will look something like this and the slope for the next part for least velocity will be the highest so it will look something like this okay now this is i am going to call one particular path name it as uh, one roman numeral one now let me use a different color and draw another path but with a change in the direction of velocity now remember here this is the time taken to complete the path now let me draw another path which goes something like this so this is the same thing where and from here it goes like this 
and let's say over here at at this point let us say that it takes a detour like this okay now remember this particular slope magnitude of this slope should be same as the magnitude of this slope in order to so magnitude of this slope must be same as magnitude of this slope in order to make sure that the velocity uh, magnitude is the same okay i will explain that clearly soon so after this let's say it again changes the direction and goes like this okay so this i'm going to call it as path 2 okay so what has happened in path 2 if i plot the magnitude of the slope the magnitude of the slope is still going to or inverse of the magnitude of the slope it is still going to look like this for both the paths okay but the difference between these two paths is that first of all it takes different amount of time to complete and secondly here there is change in the direction so there is change in direction plus the change in the velocity is instantaneous okay so change in v is instantaneous okay so this doesn't mean that the particle goes to rest at this point but in in instantaneous amount of time the particle suddenly changes the direction keeping the velocity magnitude constant so this makes sure that the law of conservation of energy is still valid okay but the direction is different now and therefore the time taken by the path 2 is different as compared to path 1 all right okay so if i draw the velocity versus x graph like this now considering the direction also then it will look something like this so if this is a this is b and this is x2 then for path 1 this is going to look similar to this because there is no change in the direction of velocity everything is positive so this will look like this uh, this will go down something like this so this is v1 v2 v3 whereas for the second path the velocity goes something like this so this is it goes like this it goes like this it goes like this and let me denote uh, the turning points by some letters let's say that this is c and this is d okay then if that is the case here here what is going to happen uh, if this is d and this is c what will happen is the following so here it goes like this and then it goes till c but then it goes to a negative value here and goes to d okay it goes back to d and then again it goes to positive value and then comes and ends at x2 okay so let me name these points as e f g h i uh, j k l m n okay so this means that our path 1 is going in the velocity versus x graph this corresponds to the path e f g h i l okay whereas our path 2 has now become e f g h i k m n j l okay this is how the 
Vx graph traverses as the particle goes through uh, path 2. Okay. So this is what we observe. All right. Now remember. Okay. Note. 1 and 2, the paths 1 and 2 are mathematically possible, are mathematically possible because they do not uh, violate the law of uh, conservation of energy and the energy value remains constant. Okay. So here this value is actually minus V3 because the magnitude of velocity must remain the same. Okay. But, but physically, physically, by physically I means because of Newton's laws. Now, of course, we do not know Newton's laws when we formulate the variational principle, but just is to get an intuition and since we already know Newton's law, it becomes easier to understand this. But physically speaking, path 2 is not possible, is not possible uh, since the velocity changes abruptly, abruptly in the region, region where u of x is constant okay but our newton's law say that this is possible so this is possible only if there is an external force but we had assumed that our system is uh, is an closed system okay so so we had considered a closed system which means there must be no external force but path 2 suggests from newton laws newton's laws that there is a presence of external force so the correct path should be the path 1 not path 2 and our mopuchui's principle should be able to say that path it should be able to choose path 1 over path 2 okay only then we can say that we can use Maupertuis principle to predict the path all right so I hope that you understand that now let us go up so now we know that we know that from newton's law newton's law it is only path 1 which says that there is no external force okay path 1 is the correct path is the correct path why because at every instant there must not be an external force because at every instance or instant of time there must not be an external force there must not be an external force but path 2 at the point where the direction changes, it suggests that at that instant there is a presence of some external force. So from Newton's laws, path 2 is not possible. Path 1 is the correct path. So, but we are here formulating a variational principle and therefore, but a variational principle, a variational principle must consider all mathematically possible paths and choose this is what the variation principle should do and choose the correct path choose the correct one 
the, the choose the correct one based on the condition based on the condition condition that variation of a quantity that represents the paths that represents the path must be zero about the correct path about the correct path this is what we need to do for example if you consider the hamilton's principle the quantity that represents the path is our action okay and the condition is that the variation in the action must be zero about the correct path okay that is this is what this is how a variational principle must be formulated so to do that here we can consider so consider the area under the vx graph okay so we are considering uh, this guy okay so we are going to consider the area under this graph so if you see for path 1 the area is given by this particular region okay whereas for path 2 the area is given by this region uh, this region plus this region plus this region plus this region twice plus this region okay why because it traverses like this like like this like this like this then goes like this then goes like this and like that okay so if you write the area in the mathematical form for path 1 okay so for oops let me use white for path 1 area is given by integral x1 to a v1 dx plus integral a to b v2 dx plus integral b2 x2 v3 dx okay whereas for path 2 area is given by integral x1 to a v1 dx plus integral a to b v2 dx plus integral b2 so if you go here so we have to now consider this particular path so that is from b to c then our area becomes so here plus b to c v3 dx plus integral c to d minus v3 dx because here the direction has changed plus integral d to c plus v3 dx again the direction changes plus integral c to x x2 v3 dx okay so this gives the area under so this path corresponds to the uh, this particular integral corresponds to uh, this part of the trajectory that is uh, that is this path and from d to c corresponds to this path and from so what we are doing is that integral from b to c that corresponds to this c to d corresponds to this d to c corresponds to this and c to x2 corresponds to this okay so going back there we have so this here if you consider uh, 
these two terms I can using the rules of integration I can write this as totally x1 to a v1 dx plus integral a to b v2 dx plus clubbing these two terms I can write it as integral uh, b2 x2 v3 dx that is combining these two terms plus this can be written as integral d to c v3 dx plus this term integral d to c v3 dx okay so here i have changed the order of integration which adds one more negative sign making this entire integral positive and that is what we get here so now if you notice the expression for the area of path 2 and path 1 the path 1 corresponds to these three integrals so here this corresponds to area of path 1 and therefore area of path 2 is greater than area of path 1 by this much amount okay so this implies that area under vx curve for path 1 is less than path 2 okay so similarly similarly any path any path other than 1 okay is going to is going to have a larger area than 1 so now i would like to pause the video and think about this for yourself because if you construct any other path it should always change uh, the direction of velocity instantaneously and therefore from newton's laws that cannot be the correct path and uh, if you consider the area under vx graph the area will be greater than the path one okay so this gives us the hint that therefore we can formulate formulate a variational principle where we can represent represent a path using a number that is proportional so that is proportional to the area under vx curve to the area under vx curve okay so just like how s was defined as integral l dt similarly we can define a quantity which is proportional so some quantity i don't know what is proportional to integral v dx okay and we can minimize this and say that the path corresponding to minimum area corresponds to the correct path so we can formulate a variational principle in this way and this is what our Maupertuis principle does principle does okay so in the next video we will see exactly how to mathematically formulate our Maupertuis principle what is the equation and how it can be related to the Hamilton's principle and so on so that's it for this video thank you for watching see you next time